Okay, good day, my friends. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about early America today. Um, if you would, this is your warm up, and I'll have that posted in uh, Google or not Google Classroom, it's learning, I should say. It's learning, not Google Classroom. Uh, it says, write a paragraph about how you think the US became a country. Uh, so three to four sentences, if you know, I mean, I assume uh, a lot of you have background knowledge on this, but if you need to, you may use the internet or phone. If you don't know, you'll submit this and it's learning. Um, an important term, and this is kind of the lesson for today about, I mean, generally how the United States became a, a country, an important term in order to understand the story is colony. Colony is a piece of land controlled by another country. Um, the controlling country is referred to as the mother country. And we'll see the United States started out as 13 colonies controlled by this country, this flag, uh, Great Britain. So Great Britain was the mother country when we're talking about the original 13 colonies. And of course, those colonies would become the first 13 states when those colonies decided to sever its relationship or ties to Great Britain. So colony is extremely important. And if you're looking at uh, the history of the 18th century, the 1700s, Great Britain, this tiny little island right here, was the most powerful country in the entire world. Uh, by, you know, during the 1700s, 1800s, that would be the 18th and 19th centuries, Great Britain had um, colonies all over the world. It had colonies at, at one point in North America, in South America, much of Africa, um, the Middle East, which is part of Asia, Asia, and all of Australia. Essentially, many parts of the world were controlled by Great Britain. And uh, when somebody creates or one country creates or has control of so many territories uh, across the world, we refer, we refer to that as an empire. Great Britain during the 1700s and 1800s had created the biggest, had established the biggest empire in world history, bigger than the Roman Empire, bigger than the Mongolian Empire. Great Britain was or is number one in world history. So this, it's, it's mind boggling to me that this tiny little island ha at one point pretty much controlled the world. Um, and that's what it says here. The United States originally on, had a, what started out as 13 colonies on the eastern coast of North America. So like right here. Um, and uh, these first 13 colonies or these 13 colonies would become the first 13 states. And these are them right here. So if you look at uh, the first 13 states and some of these States look the way they do today, like Georgia and South Carolina, they look the same way, and some of them look much different, uh, like most notably Virginia. Actually, I think Virginia is the only one that is different in terms of what its territory is. But these are the first 13 colonies, which or the 13 colonies, they keep saying the first 13 colonies, the 13 colonies, which would become the first 13 states. Massachusetts, Rhode Island, New Hampshire, New York, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. So um, when these people, these white Europeans who had migrated from Great Britain to these 13 colonies, when they got fed up with being under control of the British, they uh, fought a war to establish their own country and that own, their own country would become the United States of America. The question is, what got them so upset? And the answer to that question would be taxes. Uh, by, I mean, they, the first Europeans came to this area and, well, the first British people, I should say, came to this area in 1607. So they'd been here, white people had been here from 1607 on. And in the 1760s, 1770s, right around there, right, right around 150 years after the first white people, the first British people came to this area, they started to get upset because King George III raised their taxes. Uh, King George III actually raised their taxes because he had to fight a war against the French in this area, in North America. 
So we thought, why, and, and the British Parliament agreed, they thought, why uh, are we fighting a war in this area and not making the colonists, the people living here, pay for it? And that's what he did. He raised their taxes to pay for the French and Indian War. Again, this was a war against the French. And uh, the colonists thought that, that wasn't fair. They thought that they didn't want to pay extra taxes. They called the King George III a tyrant, which is a person who abuses their power. And uh, they said they, they said essentially they wanted a voice in the matter. They did not have representation in the British government. They did not have representatives traveling across the Atlantic Ocean to have to to make their voice heard. So their battle cry became no taxation without representation. In other words, you cannot tax us unless you give us some sort of a voice in the process. The British response was, it says that King George III did not give in. Well, he did to a certain degree. He did eliminate some taxes. The British government did eliminate some taxes but not enough for the colonists. Uh, particularly what stayed in place was the tax on tea. And if, it just as kind of a, an aside note, the Boston Tea Party was a protest against that tax. Um, so on July 4th, and, and you know, across the colonies, there were riots, there were protests, there was organization, uh, there were meetings about what to do about these taxes how to get the British government to eliminate these taxes. And really what the American colonists wanted was self-rule. They wanted self-government. So on July 4th, 1776, the colonists had decided that their, you know, that they had had enough and fighting actually had already started between the British and the colonists. But on in 1776, July 4th, uh, the colonists drafted the Declaration of Independence, signed the Declaration of Independence, and officially established the United States of America, broke off from Great Britain. And so the first 13 states became the first, I'm sorry, the 13 colonies became the first 13 states. So these colonies became states of a new country, the United States of America. Uh, a lot of people or many people think that that was it, you know, it, we, I mean, we celebrate July 4th, 1776 as the day the United States became the United States, which is true, which is 100% true. But the British did not give in. They didn't want to let the colonies go. And they fought a long war to keep them. Uh, and this war was called the American Revolution, or also known as the Revolutionary War. For eight years, like I said, the fighting started before the Declaration of Independence. It started in 1775, but it, w it went on for eight years. Eight long years, uh, the American colonists were fighting for survival uh, of the United States. It finally ended in 1783. So it, it was an eight-year war. It was a long war to get rid of the British. Finally, the colonists won and forced the British to let go. But it was a huge upset. You got to think about it. when this started in 1775 and before that, uh, the colonists were a bunch of disorganized colonies that, you know, they were going up against the most powerful, most organized empire the world had ever seen. So really, if you look at this, this was one of the biggest upsets of world history, certainly of the time. Uh, and it really shook the British Empire. But after 1783, the British lost the war again, a, a, a huge upset. And the United States had to figure out where to go from there. How would, how would the United States um, draft a government or make a government so it could survive the many challenges that it would face? So that's the story of the uh, American Revolution and the Declaration of Independence and how the United States became a country in a nutshell. Um, I hope everybody has a good day.